All right, welcome to Active Lifestyles at the Orion Center. We're uh, very fortunate today to have Jim Barnes. Jim Barnes is a World War II veteran and has uh, seen a lot of action in World War II, specifically in the Pacific uh, region. Jim, we'd like to talk to you just a little bit about, can you tell us a little bit about your, uh, your, your time in the military? The years I spent in? Yeah. Uh, well, I was overseas uh, pretty close to two years. Two years, okay. And we was on the front lines uh, about half of the time. Otherwise, we wait to get troops in right. to replace us. It's got killed. And uh, we took San Pablo Airfield, and we figured we had about 700 uh, Japs dead when we taken an airfield oh. with a bomb bombing. 700 out of how many people? Oh, not of our, not, not Americans, the Japanese. Oh, okay. The Japanese. Uh, Go ahead and ask me the questions. Well, okay, now, you, you started off in the Pacific. Now, right. how many invasions did you actually take part in? Two. Two, okay. And what islands were those? Uh, the Philippines, we walked uh, across Lady, the length of it, okay. secured that. And then we had a break in there in between and then got replacements and uh, then we went to Okinawa. Okay, and what, what was your job? Flamethrower. Flamethrower? Oh man, that sounds like a dangerous job. Oh. It was. It's worse when you think about it. Yeah. And those old farm boys like myself, you don't worry about it. Yeah. Uh, and, so you got up pretty close and personal to some of those uh, Japanese. Oh, God, we burn out some of the foxholes. Yeah. And uh, and you could hear the people in there. But, honey, that's war, buddy. Yeah, the, you're right. It is war. And uh, it's no not holes. peacetime. No holes barred on that one, right? And we killed everything that was in front of us. You better have the password. <laughs> you better have the password because if you don't, you got shot. You remember any of the passwords? Oh, Carrado. <laughs> <laughs> Geronimo, right? <laughs> well, it's simple, but. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, you could remember, you know, but. Uh, yeah. We had a lot of uh, a lot of good times and a lot of bad times. So, what was your first? What was your first invasion? Was that? Was in uh, on Leyte in the Philippines. Was that uh, under fire when you went in there? Oh gosh, yes. Okay, and you went in. Did you go in on uh, like an LS, LST? LST. All right. And uh, we made a landing. Uh, we made a pretty good landing. Was uh, and then uh, MacArthur's a smart boy. Yeah. So MacArthur was involved with this with this uh, uh, whole campaign. I understand. Oh gosh, yes, yes, yes. Come on, don't leave. <laughs> he, uh, yes, he was. He was ahead of it. Okay. And uh, and they like the Philippine people, right? Yeah. Well, he's he was pretty popular over there. Mac I understand. Yeah. So he, uh, so you you got involved in the first first invasion at late Leyte. Leyte, yeah. And uh, how long did that take on that particular island to uh, to to secure the island? Oh, at least a couple of months. Couple of months, and and out of those two months, how many how many soldiers did you guys did, did you lose? Not very many. Okay. Uh, but uh, when we took San Pablo Airfield, we really we had the long toms come up. What's a, what's a long tom? Is that the big uh, the big uh, uh, cannons? Yep. Okay. And they could they could drop the. Artillery right close to it, right close to it, and uh, it just it just took time. For those those like one 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 o five howitzers that yeah. were going in there. Yeah. So you yeah. you you it took you time to get the airfield secured. Once you got that secured, and then the U S had an air base uh, that they could work from right there, right? Yeah. And we figured that uh, after we took that airfield. They figured there's about 700 Japs we killed at the side of the. Wow. Uh, people couldn't stand it nowadays, but we was all young in our 20s and 25. Right. And right. We was ready to go. You're invincible at that point, right? Nothing can happen, <laughs> right? <laughs> well, that was that was the plan. That was, I guess, from when uh, when Eisenhower did the invasion uh, in France. Yeah. The plan was to use guys between 18 and 2022 20, who 
people were, you know, yeah. fairly young and really and thought they, they were a lot invincible. Of farm boys too. A lot of farm yeah. boys. Yeah. And you were a farm boy, obviously. Indiana. Yeah. Uh, Missouri. Mm-hmm. Fincham. Uh, he's all our age group, and uh, so we went in there. To, we went in there to win it. You uh, you went in to to, to to clean house. So late late from there, you got that secured, and that took you what two months? You said. Oh yeah, something like that. And now from going th there, then you went where to Philippines? Yeah. No, we went to Okinawa. Okinawa. Oh, okay, so you were involved at Okinawa. Oh gosh, yeah. We come back and rest and got most of us get replacements. People that get, we got killed. Right. And. Uh, because we got replacements back up to strength. Right. It took a little time, and then we headed, uh, we didn't know exactly where we was going until we got on the boat. Oh, really? And then they told us we headed for Okinawa. So that was, I assume that was pretty heavily fortified it was. by the Japanese? Yes, yes. That was, a, that was a particularly nasty one from what I heard. Well, Skyline Ridge. Skyline Ridge, yeah. Now, I assume you did uh, same kind of landing there, LST going on yep. shore, yeah, under fire. Yes. Wow. And uh, but as I said, it wasn't a one-man operation. As MacArthur had a whole crew of people. Yep. And I assume did the uh, Air Force go in and I assume bomb before you guys yes, got they, there? Yes, they, they tried to soften it up. Yeah. With these big bombs, but. They were dug in, Japs had dug in these uh, caves so far that they didn't touch them. Really? And one one cave we come into, we took about 300 women out of a cave. Women? That they had their uh, slaves and hmm. they had the Philippine people to bring and the Jap bring food to them, you know. Really? And if they, if they, if they didn't bring them enough of food, they cut their fingers off. Wow. I ain't woofing. You could, you no, could, I can believe I that. I don't care what you say. I can believe that. And uh, they were pretty nasty oh at, that, at that point. And they uh, and they had no like we did. You didn't want to kill anybody if they surrendered anything. Right. But these people didn't take any any prisoners. They, and they didn't surrender very easy either. Oh did gosh, they? no. They uh, fought to the death, pretty much. Yep. Pretty close, they shot to death, yeah. So, with your flamethrower, you must have been pretty much right into the meat of the action there. We, we burned out a lot of uh, holes. Yeah. What tunnels where it's going in and foxholes. Yep. And, uh, and my buddy from Indiana, he carried a BR that's a machine gun. Right, I know what it is. And we, uh, he had, both of us had a helper. Mm -hmm. Carried her gun, because we had these and he had a machine gun. Okay. And it didn't take those boys long to set, set it up. So you you had a little backup there with a with a guy next to you with a bar. Oh gosh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So Okinawa was was like I said, I from everything I've read, it's a really nasty campaign. How long did it take you to kind of secure that that island? Well, I don't know exactly. Uh, I got hit uh, just before we got to Skyline Ridge, and I sent back to the to, uh, to, uh, hospital on Saipan. Okay. And I stayed in the hospital there for a little while. And I wanted to go back to my outfit, they wouldn't let me. And, uh, and they said we'd get home as quick as we stayed there as what we went back there because the war was, they knew more of what we did. They knew it was winding down. Right. They knew right. they was going to drop the atomic bomb, and they know ahead of time, and uh, so they did. So you knew you, you. Basically, you went from a situation where you got wounded to to uh, a hospital located where Saipan. Yep. Saipan. Saipan, and uh, I hope they did a good job. <laughs> You're still here today. I guess they must have, right? Yeah, but there's a lot of the boys was, since we got home and passed away, and that makes it sort of bad. Yeah. To go to some of the funerals and guys you've been with. Well, you know, the World War II guys, uh, they're getting along in years now. Getting along. 
Well, I'm 92. Uh, You're 92. How old were you when, when you went to service? About 20, I'd say about 23, 24. Oh, okay, so you were one of the older guys. At the time, you yeah. know, all the guys were 18, 19 years old oh, going in. We all had uh, our cards. We just know when it was going, but we didn't know when it was going. Yeah. I, I was pretty much the same. I, I, I was on the draft list, too, when I was, in, I, when I, uh, was younger. Uh -huh. And I was number three on the draft list when I was in. So I had to join up pretty quick to, if I wanted to get what I wanted. Yeah. So. Well, well then they just they sign you whatever they wanted to. Okay. To a certain extent. Yeah, they and, sure do. Uh, uh, the, the term that I used to get when I was in the service was that the needs of the Navy come first, right? And then anything you want after that comes second, <laughs> right? Well, you got to have fun. Yeah, well. You know, we, we talked about it, and we didn't, we was all married, and we didn't want, we took precaution when we could. Yeah, well, you were married yeah. at the time, too, huh? Yeah. Because I know yeah. a lot of the guys were young and single, and they yeah. weren't married, girlfriends yeah. and everything, but yeah. that must have been tough on a married man. How long were you away from home? Two years. Wow. And then there's no right neither, and no visit on weekends and all this crap like they got now. Right, right. We, uh, you stayed there. Where'd you go to boot camp? Uh, camp Santa, Texas. I shouldn't say boot camp, should I? That's Navy. Yeah. That's I should say uh, basic training. Right. Yeah. In Texas. Texas. Yeah. So it got kind of hot down there, so you got used to the hot weather. And, and, and the weather, I assume, in, in Okinawa and some of these other places is pretty bad, right? Well, it rained. Did it? It rained. It either rained of a day or rain of a night, one or two. Oh, you man. was wet one or two times. And uh, some of the boys, and I included myself, had jungle rot, we call it. Oh, really? It, your skin just sort of peeled off. Yeah, yeah. Especially where our belts work, you know, we had to be tight to right. handle that equipment. Wow. And uh, it just uh, it just swept up and peeled off, that's all. But, uh, yeah, we was young. <laughs> yeah, you survived, huh? Oh, well, golly. Well, that's great. Yes. But, uh, so, you go to the hospital, you get fixed up, and then they, uh, then they ship you back, back to the States? Yeah, I wanted to go back to my outfit, but they wouldn't let me. They said it. I'd go home as quick because the war got over. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, so I got sent back to Percy Jones Hospital in Battle Creek. Oh, in Battle Creek, right here in the state. Yeah. Well, you weren't probably living here at the time, were you? Yep. Oh, were you living in Michigan? Yeah, I was living here. Okay. Fine. Okay. okay. Hmm. And uh, I, was a, I was a 54th guy to buy a home here in Michigan. Really? the GI Bill. Oh, the GI Bill, right. That's uh, that was quite a good uh, benefit for the veterans, it was. wasn't it? I bought a house. We didn't buy it to live there not very long because we was going to build a house. Yeah. And uh, we lived there a couple years, and then we built a house at Orchard Lake. We lived out there 22 years. And then, then you did you build this house or buy this house? I built this house. Oh yeah. I built the one in Orchard Lake, and I built the one here. Well, you got a beautiful time. piece of property here, that's for sure. Well, it's. Uh, but up to state land, that's what makes it look yeah, better. Yeah, right, and, right. Uh, and you own it as much as anybody else, you know, on the state land. Right. Well, people don't take advantage of it like they should. Right. They have a nice ball mountain up here, you know. Oh, it's, yeah. Uh, Lake Orion is really nice. It's got, got a lot people, of parkland for the size of the people city. People don't go. Well, some people do. Well, I... Yeah. <laughs> some people few. do. Anyway, uh, Everybody looks at the World War II veterans as being their great generation. And believe me, I've talked, now I think you're the fifth, fifth or sixth one that I've interviewed, uh -huh. and every one has just been unbelievably great. I mean, you guys have sacrificed so much for our generation, it's just unbelievable. And uh, we appreciate your service, it's been fantastic. Right, but anyway, listen, we're, we're at the end of our time, Jim. Okay. And uh, I really appreciate well, you talking to you. us today. It's been great talking to you. And I didn't realize I was with a flamethrower all this whole time. <laughs> thank you. It's great.